the defending champion Golden State Warriors because the Pelicans, they led by as many as 17 points at half. I worry this one might be over, but silly me, never a doubt about the defending champions, especially when Draymond Green is lighting this type of fire early. So a hard foul here on Brandon Ingram. Things get a little bit chippy. Having a, a conversation here, Rick. Yeah, yeah, well, look, Draymond is doing what Draymond does. He's kind of like, you know, he's very similar to Dylan Brooks in Memphis. Well, we both know that Ingram man, Draymond, to throw them hands. We have the That is true. The discussion continues. The Warriors, they trouble as many as 20 points in the first half. But when Draymond's clapping like hat that, having a little bit of a discussion. <laughs> that's, that's how we're going to term this. We love you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Poole, a miss here. Back out to Steph Curry. It's the one-two punch, today. Kevon Looney and those offensive boards really kept that mentality on the offensive end, the same way you talk about Draymond defensively. Oh, they got their defense back. Oh, snap. They're there we go. They're second. They that got part. their defense back. That part. I know this is a lot with Steph on the floor, and he was absolutely exceptional. But to me, I mean, the ball's moving. Steph's moving. It was the moment, so when Steph wasn't on the floor, the basketball was still beautiful. It was Jonathan Kaminga stepping up. It was Jordan Poole stepping Ooh. up. Didn't do a thing like that. Ooh. Ooh. That, that's, that's a Euro We go all around the world. And then Steph. Steph all around the world. Cheetah Girls. Gets oh. his own rebound out to Jordan Poole. We're doing Cheetah Girls this morning? That was a little bit of Cheetah Girls. That's a, we're aging ourselves, Malika. Seven-point game at this point. Steph Curry going to work again. When he makes threes like that, I, the Vince Carter, it's over. And then a little hop back on defense. Oh, that Curry, that little Curry scurry. The little Curry scurry. <laughs> little Curry scurry. <laughs> you don't like to see that. And then Clay Thompson. Dagger. That beautiful pass from Steph. Even Steve Kerr has to shake his head at a pass like that. One more look at it. Yeah, if you got, if you got coached them like skin boys, you'd be frustrated too. Well, the Warriors, they complete the 20-point comeback. Here they were after the game. Take a listen. That first quarter and a half, they punked us. And we were down 20. It take a real one to talk when you're down 20. And I was able to get my guys going, and then they started doing what they do, and I can do what I do. The one thing that we have in you know, Draymond's fire in the first half is the ultimate you know, testament and, and visual of what it is, is we have a competitive spirit that is unmatched, um, and it's been that way for a decade. Draymond willed us to victory tonight. I mean, just... Um, his intensity, his frustration early um, with the way we were playing, mad at the world, yelling at everybody, their bench, our bench, me, and frankly, we, we all deserved it. We need his fire. Without Draymond's fire, his, his energy, his competitiveness, this thing doesn't tie together. So the Warriors, this is breaking news here. They looked like the actual Warriors last night from the end of the third quarter on. It was business as usual, if you will. And that's because Draymond Green, he was playing with that fire that we just heard him talking about, doing all the little things on defense. And then when Steph is cooking, I mean, outscoring the Pelicans by himself in the final 530 of the third, we, we should have known, right, what was to come. And then when Golden State, it's a vintage ball movement. I mean, giving up pass after pass, giving up a good look for a better look, shooting a season best 70% from the floor in the fourth. Richard Jefferson. Yes. I want to start with Draymond Green in all this. What did you see from him? Well, when we say Warriors are being Warriors, this is how they won four championships. Yep. This is what they have been done. They're an outstanding team. Now, look at this graphic. Draymond Green, two for four in the first half, one for nine in the second. He is one of the most versatile defenders the NBA has ever seen, maybe professional sports have ever seen. Now, here's an example, right? They're on a 15-4 run right now. He's getting, he got Jordan Poole out. He's pointing. He's now look, he's taking a little break right there. He's still an old man now, but he is just the back of the traffic. He knows. So now, if you're the Kaminga, you don't got to foul. Play good defense, run, C, run CJ off, and then close out. Look at that closeout. He stops the ball in the paint and closes out strong side to a bigger shooter. That is a very, very difficult and technical play. It's impressive. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Well, and we just heard Draymond Green say it because I feel this with you, Richard. When when you turn your game up a notch, I feel like that brings my game up a notch. Well, yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm here to raise the level of everyone's ignorance. But that's, that's what Draymond what, that's said about Steph, is. right? He said when I turn it up a notch, <laughs> Steph turned it up two notches. We all hopped in line and followed him, and no, and he was locked in. No one was stopped. 
stopping him. We've seen, though, Steph do this time and time again today. What was special about last night? Well, this company, ESPN, loves a 30 for 30. Let me give you a 35 for 30. Most 35-point games, age 30 or older, Steph jumped LeBron James and Kobe Bryant now at 66. Ooh. So that's so impressive. But let's talk about those shots that helped him in that big outpour. Uh, let's roll my tape, please, Director Kathy. Thank you. Baby. The Warriors are number one in three-point makes per game. So you know a lot of shots are going up. But the real unsung hero is this guy right here, Kevon Looney. Three guys on defense, two on offense. He out-hustles, he out-taps him, gets another board. Now, he could have lost Steph, but he has the awareness to find him again and relocate. So even their misses turn to makes yep. based off of not just one guy like Steph, it's the whole team. I mean, and Steph did plenty of damage with the ball in his hands last night, and that is so important for Golden State. But the thing is, to me, when the Warriors are clicking, they're also moving the ball. It doesn't stick with Steph Curry, and that's what happened last night. We saw it in the highlight. Passes were being flung all around. So, Kendra Perkins, talk to me about what stood out to you about Golden State. Are you, you covering know, this uh, number on purpose? Yes, I am. Oh. You know, when we talk about the 305, we thinking about the sand, the beach, the sunny weather. We thinking about DJ Khaled, God did, Rick Ross, the ball's off. But I'm not talking about that type of 305 today. I'm talking about this one. 305 games with 30 assists. That's what the Golden State Warriors do been doing since the Steve Kerr era. They lead the league, and the second place is 132 more than the Nuggets. That's a lot. That's almost doubling. So run my tape real quick. Here we go right here. We talk about player movement. We talk about ball movement. Watch Klay Thompson on this play. He started on the opposite corner, relocates all the way to the top of the other wing over here for Steph to see him. This is the dagger. It's not about just ball movement. It's about the player movement. This is beautiful basketball. Look, Steve Kerr can't believe it. He didn't want four championships. Wait, 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 wait. America, 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 listen, listen, come with me. Come with me, America. Walk with me. Oh, they're break no, 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 no. I don't care about you guys. They're, see, they're breaking down film. I like to break down other things because, you know, that's just... That's the problem with me. Can we show this? Can we show? I, I want you guys to so see what? this. Because I saw this. Watch this. Did you see the POV? Watch their whole bitch. Look at Colin's ugly oh, butt. No. Look at them. Watch their whole face. They're all just like, oh. <laughs> just to a man. Oh. Look at his face. He was just like. <laughs> he had to look away. They had to look away. Like, look at, like, uh, look, they're just like, uh, what, 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 like, their whole bitch. So when they talk about fear, when they talk about the moral life, and like, yeah, look at, look, uh, oh, no, listen, we're going to respect Willie we Green. Willie we, love yeah, Willie. we love Willie. Collins, Jaron Collins, Jason Collins, I don't know which one it is. We don't care about them, right? But look at it. Look, you got fans that's like, yeah, bro, I feel you, bro. Look at it. Look, you just, look. <laughs> my, the, my favorite thing, if I ever had a highlight Ooh. ever, the one time I had a highlight, you want to see the other bitches' but reaction. And when the bitch is doing that, look at them, even the fans are like, we see y'all. We know. Here they come. Here come them warriors. Jackson Here come Hayes them warriors. Jackie, Jackson Hayes is doing the ooh. 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 You give him a stank face. So here's the thing. The Warriors, this is their remaining schedule when we look at it. The BPI chance games, 93%, 32. 32 against Nuggets, 74. Well, How are we well, feeling about the Warriors Well, right first now? of all, that Portland number is too damn low. They find it 100%. Yeah, They've yeah. been getting a spanking. But I will tell you this. You look at the Kings, the Thunder, those two teams in particular that's fighting to get into the postseason and stay in the play-in tournament, that's going to be a test for the Warriors. And, and let me be really honest. The playoffs have already started. Like, I think that's why you're seeing so such high-level games. You're seeing so many, like, again, we talked about the Embiid-Jokic matchup. There was no matchup, and that was, like, the biggest story. These games matter. They're all weighed the same. 82 games all weighted the same. But this right here, these are all must-win if you're the Warriors. They're all must-wins. A absolutely, and I think what we're seeing from the Signature Warriors, the reason why they're getting these wins is because of their defense. Mm. If you think about last year, the reason why they won the championship, they were number two in defensive rating. This year, they were 17th. It seems like finally we've been waiting on Draymond Green to say, hey guys, follow me again. It right. seems like that moment happened last night. Like you said, the playoffs have started, and I love it. I love this play. The atmosphere has already been electric, and the question was, okay, after the incident early in the season, is Draymond going to be able to have that fire? And we kind of said, if you... Well, uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. They, they just, good. They just lost the yeah. Silver Wolves. Now yeah, the yeah. Wolves. And, and, Let's and, pump the brakes. Yeah, but it, was, it was, was great to see a third quarter, second half comeback it was. the Warriors because that is Warrior basketball. They run you around in the first half, third quarter, they break you down. 
And then fourth quarter. Also, helped. these games, especially without Wiggins, has allowed Jonathan Kaminga to sort of grow. You've seen right. more consistent double-digit outputs offensively. And then also Jordan Poole coming off the bench. It seems like he's finally more comfortable with his role now than it was before. So all of these things are happening at the right time, even though we're pumping the brakes But a at the bit. end of the day, you know what I'm looking at when I see this schedule? Which wow. see? At. <laughs> they gotta do it on the road, especially because the 100%. West. Is Some of these teams so ain't doing nothing though. Tough. Some and of these teams will be resting. It's only gonna get tougher because Kevin Durant, Ooh. the Suns, they are welcoming him what back you? tonight. Hey, what's up, guys? Jack from Jaggy Sports here. And last night's game of Warriors against the Pelicans, it was phenomenal, right? Pelicans led, I think it was by 18 at the half, and <clears throat> it was basically thought by a lot of media analysts that this game was over then all of a sudden <laughs> warriors just came back like storming like they always do ray and threes um draymond green just uh lit up the entire warriors roster got them going it was a phenomenal game phenomenal game now the problem here is they are awesome at home but they suck on the road now if they play sacramento they're playing on the road first two games we're talking about playoffs if they play sacramento they're playing on the road they suck on the road yeah i get it but i think they want that matchup but i agree with jj reddick and him saying that they will not win the West without Andrew Wiggins. So how well can the Warriors do? I get it. They beat the Pelicans. It was a phenomenal game. But it was just a regular season game. It was the Pelicans. Pelicans were with, without Zion Williamson. Warriors were completely healthy, except obviously Andrew Wiggins was not there. So what the hell can you expect from the Warriors moving forward? They are the defending champions, I'll give them that much. They are the defending champions. However, this entire season we have seen them on the road just completely losing it. And they lost. I think they were like 7-25 and 25 on the road or something like that. At the end of the day, that's not going to cut it, especially in the playoffs, right? When you don't have home court, home court advantage, obviously that does not vote well for you moving forward into the playoffs and eventually your goal of making it to the NBA Finals. But you have Steph Curry, you have Draymond Green, you have Klay Thompson. So can this Warrior squad, without Andrew Wiggins, because I don't know when he's back due to personal reasons, I have a feeling I know what's up, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it, obviously, because it's just not cool if I say it. So the bottom line here is Warriors, they need to get out and actually perform on the road. That's the end, end story. Now, I know they're banking on Sacramento because it's uh, Denver, then Memphis, then Sacramento, then um, Phoenix, then Clippers, then the Warriors, then Minnesota. Minnesota is like right on their tail in terms of seating. Now, they have a lot more games left, maybe like six or seven. I'm not 100% sure the exact amount of games that they have left. However, the fact that remains is they are you know battling for a, a spot right so number four seeded phoenix has the exact same wins as the clippers now the warriors have the exact same win too but they're number six seed so this could change in the matter of a week and i know what you're saying what about sacramento what if they actually play Sacramento? I have to pick the Warriors. Just because of the fact that they got the playoff experience. And by statistics, Sacramento is not a very good, de good defensive team. So that could vote well for the Warriors. But then again, the Warriors are bad on the road. So I'll leave it to you guys. How far, without Andrew Wiggins, how far 
can the Warriors go in the playoffs? Given the fact that Andrew Wiggins is not there, given the fact that they suck on the road, and given the fact that they are awesome at home, right? So you gotta you gotta take those into consideration. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you guys think. How far can the Warriors go in the playoffs? This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.